Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. In today's short video, I'm just going to show you how to set up a private endpoint within Azure Data Factory. If you're new to my channel, I'm Riz Ang and I make videos about data engineering and cloud, in particular, Microsoft Azure. Stay tuned. If you're new to private endpoint, private endpoint is essentially a network resource that allows you to connect privately within a contained network for example, Azure Virtual Network to a particular resource, for example, Azure Blob Storage, Data Lake, or SQL Database. Now, in today's video, I'm actually going to show you how you do that quite easily within Azure Data Factory, which is a relatively new feature within Azure Data Factory to do so. Let me show you how. All right. In today's video, I'm going to show you what I already have because I'm not going to create everything from scratch. In my Azure portal, I have a number of resources, but I'm going to focus on two things, the data factory and Azure Data Lake. This example can apply to Azure SQL Database as well, because it's very similar, but I'm just going to use Azure Data Lake as an example. In my Azure Data Factory, I have a bunch of linked services, and I just have a normal Azure integration runtime, which is the public uh, Azure IR that is built in. And that's it pretty much. And I have a link service here to the data lake. And using the auto resolve, a managed identity authentication method, which is my favorite uh, method for authentication. And if I click test connection, it will be successful because one, I have already assigned the data factory managed identity access in the access control access management IAM here. If I click Role Assignment, I have already signed my Azure Data Factory Managed Identity with Storage Blob Data Contributor. And also from the networking perspective, uh, I'm not allowing access from all networks, but only selected. No IP address allowed in the firewall. And I do allow Azure services on the trusted service list to access the storage account. Now, this is the the network pass for the data factory uh, to gain access to the Azure Data Lake. Without this, this wouldn't work. This test connection would fail. And just for the, for your information, this means that from network perspective, if you tick this box, essentially any public Azure resources that's created out there can gain access to your or to this is your storage account. Now, this tends to be a security uh, risk or issue that some businesses don't want. And just to give an idea, uh, if I untick this one and I save, give it a couple of minutes. If I test this connection again, this will now fail because from networking perspective, Within this Azure Data Lake, I'm not allowing Azure services on the trusted service list to access the storage account. There is another way to do to make it work, and it's actually a more secure way, and that is to use private endpoint. But to do that, we do need to create a new Azure IR within a managed private uh, virtual network. And let me cancel this. If I go to integration runtimes, I'm just going to create a new Azure. IR, new Azure IR. I'm just going to stick with the default name. Now make sure you add this, uh, enable this virtual network configuration so that your Azure IR will be hosted in a dedicated virtual networks, and not public. Keep them all enabled. This is just to allow, to allow you to make a testing connection. For further details, just check this out. And you can also select the region uh, where I'm just going to pick UK South. Okay. Bear in mind that there's a checkbox here, auto termination of 60 minutes of inactivity, meaning that if it's uh, in inactive um, and you want to actually run uh, using this IR, this will take a bit of time to run uh, start again. Okay. If I just create that one, it will take probably about a minute to create, I just wait that it's running. 
before we can use it, we want to create a new connection privately to the Azure Data Lake from Data Factory. So if I go to Manage Private Endpoint here, create a new one to Azure Data Lake here. I'm just gonna keep the one basic here and I'm just gonna find that same Azure Storage account. Yeah, just click Create. Okay, it might take one or two minutes to provision this. And what you see here in Data Factory, you can also see it directly in the resource itself, in the Data Lake storage account. Under networking, you can see there's a private endpoint connections. You go in and you click refresh. That's what you, uh, what you just created. And what you want to do is you want to approve this connectivity. And you click that one, you click approve. Yes. Give it a couple of minutes uh, to, yeah, to make this work. And if you are curious, uh, and if you happen not have access to approve, uh, you typically you need at least a contributor role or owner role. Or if you want uh, something a bit more granular, you do have to create maybe a custom role with a private endpoint uh, action permission. I'm just going to give it a couple of minutes now before I make a new connection. Uh, I'm just going to wait until this is now approved. Okay, now after a couple of minutes, everything is now succeeded and approved. I can now go back to my link services and click my ADLS link service. I'm going to switch to my new IR. Okay, and then without doing anything else, I'm just going to click test connection. It is now successful with private endpoint. That's it. Thanks for joining me for today's video on how to set up private endpoint within Azure Data Factory with Azure Data Lake as an example. I hope you learned something from today's video. And if you do, press like that button and also subscribe to my channel for more videos about data engineering, cloud, and maybe Azure as well. And for that, I'll see you next time.